y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden. And today we're gonna to be working on the new section of the side garden where we're going to be cleaning up pruning back perennials and planting some new perennials and annuals. Okay, so we already did a first section of the side garden, everything to this direction. And now we're gonna work on this portion. This is probably the most difficult portion of all the um, parts of the side garden that I have, just because there's a whole lot going on. And so what I wanna do is I wanna just take you through some of the plants that are in here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start by really just kind of cleaning up and pruning back perennials. And we'll walk through each particular um, plant and then from there we're going to plant some new perennials and some new annuals okay let's do a few close-ups and of course we're right when the sun is starting to come over <laughs> but i can only garden when i when i have time y'all so so this container right here had tons of black-eyed susan uh, vines spilling over it with a bunch of purslane that now needs to be cut back because those are all annuals we have a um lantana in here got a bunch of balloon flowers this is a big negative space filled with weeds we're going to do some planting it looks like i've already got um, my bearded um, iris are starting to bud up which is looking really good lots and lots of <laughs> weeds <laughs> lots and lots of weeds to cut back i'm excited there's a lot of pruning in this particular video and pruning is one of my favorite things to do in the garden so let's go ahead and get started Okay, I'm going to start by um, just cleaning everything off of this particular trellis. Let's pull this out. And you can see these vines went really far. Just get in here and do a little bit of cleaning. I'm not going to plant this up today, but there we go. Okay, got that all cleaned up. And I'm going to go ahead and put the drip line back in, just like that. And that'll be a fun one to plant up pretty soon. Okay, so this right here is a lantana. I have no idea if this lantana is going to be coming back because, truthfully, I don't pay attention when I'm buying lantanas. Some of them are um, annual in my area and some of them are perennial. So we're just going to go ahead and cut this back and leave the plant in there for now to see if it comes back. Okay, so over here, I've got just like a bunch of like debris and trash and got a couple of different things coming up here. These right here are balloon flowers that are coming back up. They are pretty on my area. They're fun, they're not my favorite. I'll probably end up replacing them someday um, with it. So we'll see what happens there. Now, I don't know what this is right here. I think something has reseeded itself. So I'm going to let it grow on for a little bit and see what it is before coming in here and just pulling it up. Because I see it in a few places. And um, I don't know, maybe it'll be something fabulous. I'll try to look around for leaves that are similar to it to see if I can figure out like what it is. And then... I think this right here is a weed. And I think we definitely should plant something in this area for now because if this lantana comes back, it's gonna it's gonna be a while um, for it to fill in this space. So I think it might be really good just to go in and clean it all out. I did have a Baptisia back here, but it didn't survive its first year. So um, I think this might be a really good area to plant maybe some of my purple cone flowers or actually my thistle. I have some uh, two or three thistle plants that I grew from bare root. And I think this might be a really good place to put them. That pop of blue in that area might be fabulous truthfully maybe we'll do that now back here is 
all we got all weeds going on back here a lot of debris these are all weeds back here Okay, this right here is an aster. It is called Lathis Bluebird and it's glorious. And it's already got a ton of new growth. So I need to come in here. And it looks like there is a um, Super Venus Stormburst at the base of here. And it did come back last year. Since it's annual extension zones, 8A to um, 11B. So I don't see it coming back yet. Looks like a lot of the soil got um, pushed off around it, probably because it looked like my drain pipe was off. And so I don't know if that's going to come back. I, usually, I think I would have seen it by now, but we'll go ahead and leave it for right this moment. And then I'm just coming in here and breaking off the dead stuff from the aster. Loved including more asters in my gardens. There's some really fun, unique, um, kind of filler flower feel to them that I, I just really enjoy. Okay, over here we've got some bearded iris going, but I'm going to kind of start behind here in this container that had lantana. I had a lot of lantana on this portion of the side garden because it's just so stinking hot. This faces west and all the heat bounces off of the brick walls. It's intense y'all. I'm not going to worry about the containers today. I did just want to clean that up a little bit. There's a lot of dead debris on this Italian stone pine, but we'll get that cleaned up at a later point in time. Now, um, I do have a boxwood right here. This is a wintergreen boxwood. It needs to be cleaned up. I'm not gonna get out my uh, hedge trimmers for such a little boxwood. <clears throat> I'm just gonna come in here and hand trim it. So I'm gonna start by cutting off the top. And then I'm just going to use my clippers to kind of shape it a little bit along the edges. And I'm going for kind of a rounded look. I'm not doing any like crazy pruning on it because it is so young. Just trying to give it a little bit of a ball shape. Not perfect. It gave it a little bit of shape. And that's going to allow some of the other plants to do a little better in the area. So right here is a Phlox Red Riding Hood that I actually planted a couple of years ago from um, Bluestone Perennials. But I had it further back in this garden and it did not prosper. It was not getting enough sun. So um, this last fall I moved it forward. So I'm really hoping that it, it does better this year. Just coming in here and digging out some more of the debris underneath the bearded iris. Very excited for the bearded iris to start blooming. I deal with a lot of Bermuda grass in my gardens. So those of you who uh, deal with Bermuda grass, I feel for you. It sucks. It's an ongoing, never ending battle. Okay. Back here is a whole bunch of weeds. So this right here, this pot was a, um, a lily in the Nile that didn't make it. Pull that out. And then let's go ahead and start pulling out some of these weeds so we can see better what's going on in here.
Okay, so this guy right here is a Windwalker Salvia, and I might have to sacrifice some of this new growth to get this cleaned out. However, leaving some of these branches in there would actually be helpful because this plant does flop quite a bit. And so leaving a few of these in here will look, will kind of create like a trellis kind of situation, which would be, should be cool. This plant gets big. I love it. I think it's so beautiful. It's so like whimsical looking. And I mean, it's called Wind Walker. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave some of these older branches in here to kind of act like a trellis to support some of these. I think that'll be nice. Okay, so we've got some violas that have spread from seed over here. Those up. Also got some additional um, weeds kind of tucked into these um, dianthus. And this dianthus, I'm actually going to be moving. So this guy right here, let me see. This guy right here is going to get dug up. So don't be fooled by dianthus like this. This is, um, this is a proven winner. It's like on the town or something like that. I'll put it, I'll put the name. But the roots are like, this all spreads out, but the roots are kind of towards the middle. They're not as spread out as you would think. So I'm just going to come in here using my hori hori knife kind of dig around where I think the root ball is. I think I might be able to divide this guy too. So I kind of just put my hori hori knife in and then push it back to kind of lift the plant some. There we go. All right, I definitely think that we can divide this guy into a couple. So, took that out, and the reason I took it out is because, like, I don't know why, I, I think I originally had six of these, but only four made it, and so the way it ended up, the ones that survived, is kind of like an odd, <laughs> it looked weird. So I'm going to go ahead and spread these out a little bit, but these dianthus are looking beautiful, and dianthus, anytime um, they're finished with the bloom cycle, you just shave them back, and they do beautiful. Okay, the next big pruning is going to be this abelia. And it doesn't necessarily have to be pruned. You're really just pruning it for shape and scale more than anything. If you are going to prune it, you want to prune in um, late winter, early spring. But this guy is getting big. So I'm going to go ahead and prune it back for um, shape because there are some perennials under here. So um, I don't think the shape is going to look super great to start off with. Especially because right here, I mean, I'm just using some hand pruners. I'm not, I didn't get out my hedge trimmers because I'm lazy, y'all. Just didn't want to do it. Didn't want to haul them out. So what I'm going to do is kind of just start by trimming around the base and scaling it back. I don't, I'm not really worried about controlling its height. I'm more worried about controlling its width. This gets beautiful flowers in the fall. This is a kaleidoscope abelia. Okay, definitely wasn't going for like a perfect like ball shape because this will become more organic as the season goes on, which I like. I think it'll look really good. 
but just kind of need it cleaned up so I can see what's going on in the front of here, which reminds me of these guys back here. These are powwow cone flowers. And if you can only have one cone flower in your garden, I highly suggest you get a powwow cone flower. These will be going into their third or fourth year. Last year they were massive. There's two of them over here. They were extraordinary to say the least. And uh, yeah, they're awesome. So if you get the opportunity and uh, you see some powwow cone flowers, definitely add these to your landscape. They take the full sun. They just give and give and give on flowers. The color is bright and cheerful and happy. And I love them. So we got both of those over there. Okay. <laughs> Looks good, nice and cleaned up. We'll do this section another time. Looks good, nice and cleaned up. So I'm gonna just take a moment and get a lot of this trash put away and then start gathering all my elements. And the next thing we're gonna do is start fertilizing. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do, be doing is fertilizing my shrubs and perennials. I'm just taking some plant tone and just sprinkling it on each, some of the plants. And then just kind of rubbing it into the soil. It's not signed. It's like, it doesn't have to be anything intense, but just helping get some nutrients into the soil around each of your perennials each season is so incredibly helpful. And uh, you can pour like me, or you can just take a handful, toss it under the plant, move it around. Super simple like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and fertilize all the existing plants. Okay. So we're gonna start planting some perennials and annuals. And it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> I bought some things for this area of the garden, but I grew a lot of them from bare root. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start planting about these. I'll talk a little bit about them and then I'll do some voiceovers on more details about each of them, just so that you guys will know all that information because I don't have everything memorized. Um, but also whenever I plant each of these plants, I'm gonna be adding plantone fertilizer to the base of each of them. I also wanted to point out that this is a west facing garden. I have drip lines throughout everything. And the drip lines are set up in a way that if I have a plant that's not getting enough water, I can punch in an extra emitter um, at the base of that plant. The drip line is what really allows me to grow so much on this west side. I get a lot of questions about Texas sun and really, really hot areas. The drip irrigation is, that's next level, right? So that's what really allows me to grow a lot of this because I'm getting precise um, water to the base of the plants. And that precise water might seem excessive, but it's way better than hand watering, right? Because I'm using a ton less water for that. And then it's better for the foliage overall because it's not getting like water on it all the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, there, remember there is a lantana. We don't know if it's coming back. It's a little too early right now. But I picked these up at um, Green Acres the other day. It is um, uh, Everla Dianthus Everlast Violet Blue, one gallon size. I got two of these and these are perennial in my area. So let's start by planting those. They're gonna add a lot of really great color to this area. And I'm just using my Hori Hori knife today to dig my holes. Now I don't like digging big holes and truthfully, even one gallon kind of annoys me. <laughs> You would think that with all of the um, <laughs> with all the gardening that I'd be cool with like digging, but I don't I don't, I don't really like it. <laughs> it's not my thing. But um, so a lot of times you'll see me starting with smaller plants just because I don't want to dig a big hole. You'll rarely see me planting anything over a gallon um, unless that's the only size I can get it, <laughs> get it for. So basically what I'll do is I'll dig my hole toss in a handful of fertilizer, plant some fertilizer to get these planted. Loosen up the root ball some, and then get these tucked in. And these will add some really great color. They'll all also kind of complement the dianthus that I have on the uh, next portion of the garden. 
Now this dianthus is hardy to zone 5A, blooms early spring, spring, late spring, autumn, winter, late summer. It's about 12 to 14, or excuse me, eight to 12 inches tall by 10 to 14 inches wide, and it loves a full sun exposure. Um, the more you fertilize it, the better it's gonna do with its blooms, and it is known for having some of the longest blooms out of all varieties of dianthus. Next in this corner over here, I started three sea holly eryngiums from Bare Root. And they get pretty tall, very drought tolerant. They love the heat. And I would love some different color over here, like the blue tones that they have. I think it'd look really, really nice. So I'm gonna put all three plants over here. So I'm just gonna dig up my soil, add some fertilizer. And then let's see what these plants look like, starting them from bare root. So I don't want to disturb their roots too much since they're so young. Okay, get those tapped into here. I had some people tell me that their erygium, in, erygium, in, erygium <laughs> took a couple of years to bloom when they started it from bare root. So just as a reference for you all. Now, oryngiums are a perennial for me. They're about three feet tall and they bloom early summer to late summer. They are hardy in zones five through nine and they love full sun and do great in clay soil. And oryngium has a pretty big taproot, so um, I'm trying to not disturb it too much as I plant these. Just loosen things up just a little bit and then move on. There's a lot of the spirea roots right here that are all spread out. I think that is probably a purple balloon flower. Tell you what, if these orangium make it in my garden, I'm gonna be starting a lot. Because I love them so much. I feel like we're planting a lot of perennials that aren't gonna make impact for a couple of years. Just kind of hard, because a lot of gardening shows you watch, they have the full-sized plant already, right? Um, and I'm not, I'm not in that position. Maybe someday, I don't know. Um, but so a lot of the plants I start with are smaller, because um, it's more cost-effective that way. So this guy right here is a purple echinacea, and this particular one is native to my area. And I grew it from bare root as well. And it should get pretty stinking large and fill in this space beautifully. So I'm really excited to see this. And it should take the heat of this west-facing sun beautifully. And this echinacea gets about three to four feet tall and it is hardy all the way down to zone four through eight. All right, and we're actually gonna tuck one more of those perfect purple echinacea right back here. And I'm really hoping it spreads and fills in the space. I think that would just be lovely. This echinacea is loves full sun. It grows really well in clay soil and is extremely drought tolerant. Okay, so this next area, I've got this dianthus that we want to replant. This is the one that we dug up. Replant it here. It's right next to a double scoop bubblegum coneflower. And I really like for my dianthus to spill over the side of the garden. I wouldn't typically suggest transplanting plants other than fall. But I think if you give them enough attention, water and fertilizer, they'll be fine. Let's get that guy in there. This Paint the Town Fancy Dianthus is from Proven Winners and it prefers part sun to sun, grows about six to eight inches tall by a 16 to 18 inch spread and is in hardy in zones <sighs> four through nine. Okay, hopefully that guy will make it. In addition in this space, I'm gonna plant in some chocolate cosmos. Now, uh, Kristen actually bought a flat of these. She had to buy like 16. She loves them. She uses them for projects and stuff. It's called Coco Mocha Cosmos and they are not perennial in my area. They are an annual, but I'm going to go ahead 
and tuck in the three of them right here. I think it'll be really nice. They like full sun. So I think that'll be super fun to have that kind of like brownish red, dark burgundy red tone right here. I think it'll look really good. And it's going to look, I know I'm putting a lot of my plants close together, but that's actually my style. I really, really like that. I literally love them growing on top of each other. And these Cosmos, like part sun to sun, they're about 10 to 12 inches tall by 12 to 18 inches wide. And they are only hardy in zones 10 and 11. Um, they do mound up beautifully, but will be gone by frost. Okay, in this area, we're gonna be putting in some annuals. Now, I had bought some of these Salvia Oxford Blue and Salvia Pink Sunday from the uh, Collin County Master Gardener saying they're not doing very well. So I need to go ahead and get them in the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck some of them over here. And then I'm also going to tuck in some um, zinnias. The zinnias are Swizzle Cherry Ivory and they're one of my favorite zinnias. But let's go ahead and get the Salvia in first. This salvia is not a perennial, it's an annual in my area, I believe. These guys are struggling, so I just need to get them in the ground. They'll do better in the ground. And then I picked up um, these at Covington's. They do coupons for people who shop there a whole lot. <laughs> which is me, and um, they um, they do coupons for different things. So this one was like five free four inch bedding plants. <clears throat> so I picked up the Zinnia Swizzle Cherry Ivory, which I love, it's gorgeous, 10 to 12 inches tall, 10 to 12 inches wide, absolutely beautiful, excellent for cut flowers as well. So we'll get those tucked in too. Okay, so like I always say, it doesn't look like much. The things we put in here today are gonna be in my garden for years to come and are just gonna fill these beautiful, beautiful spaces. So let's walk through this. We put in the two new varieties of Dianthus and we put these in here so that they could kind of tie in. I do like to do a lot of repeat in my garden. So even though it's not the same variety of Dianthus, having it as a repeat here adds continuity throughout my garden. So we've got that and then these coordinate with it. Back here we tucked in three sea holly eryngiums that I grew from bare root that are doing really good. Those will get nice and tall and fill in the space with a beautiful blue tone. I have another thistle over there that I'll show you in a little bit. This right here is a purple echinacea or coneflower. This gets very large in this space. So we'll fill that space in beautifully and then we planted one there I also planted one there so they will flank this container this container is not done I'm still thinking about it i know i want to keep evergreens in it i got to center up this evergreen yeah it's going to come at a later point in time so that's looking good right there then up front we tucked in three uh coco mocha choco mocha cosmos right there those are annuals in my area we also transplanted the cyanthus it used to be right there and that was right here so that's looking really good as well. Now this right here is my other Eryngium. Um, I think it's called Rico or, yeah, Rico. So ret Retro, Retro. So it's a different variety, but it still has that blue color. So that blue color will tie into the blue color that'll be back in that corner too. And then these don't look so hot, but this is a salvia that I got from the um, Collin County Master Gardeners Association sale the other day and hopefully they'll perk up. I've got um, two varieties, Blue Oxford and Pink Sunday. And then I tucked in five of these uh, Zinnia Swizzle Ivory Cherry or Cherry Ivory, some combination of that. These will fit along beautifully. We cut back this Abelia greatly. Looks really nice. I'm really thinking I want a container here with potentially a boxwood. Um, so I've got a boxwood there and I would like a container with a boxwood here that I would like to keep it a round shape. 
I think it would look really pretty because right here is my Golden Falls Weeping Red Bud. And it's kind of like a chartreuse color. And it's very wild and whimsical. So I think something a little more refined right here might be nice. So I think I'll do that at a later point in time. All my iris are coming up really nicely. The sky is going bonkers. But everybody's looking really good. Trim back a lot of the perennials. This space, the goal is to not see ground. So we're getting there, um, really starting to fill it in. So next on the side garden, we have this section, which is a hot mess. <laughs> I've got a bunch of plants jammed in there. I need to pull some out. I need to move some. I need to plant some different ones. I think this is also where I'm gonna plant my obedient plant and let it run wild in this corner and spill out through here. Um, but yeah, I don't love this section. I've struggled year after year after year with it. So um, but that'll be the next one coming up. It's looking really good. Watered everything in. It's right about one o'clock. Gonna take my kids to see the new Ghostbusters movie. Okay, this is good. It's a good one. Um, when I, a lot of people have asked like, how do I plan for my gardens? And <clears throat> I don't, like hardcore plan. I spend a t lot of time looking, staring at my gardens. Not for long periods of time, just for short periods every day. Walking through and thinking, oh, would it be nice if I put something right there? And I would want it to be about four feet tall. What do I have that's in that area, that, you know, that, would, that size that would be good in that area? I think a lot of those things when I'm looking at stuff. And then when it's time for me to come out here and like work on this garden, I write down things ahead of time, as you can see from my garden planner at the beginning of this video. I write down things ahead of time and they don't have to be set in stone. Like I don't have to follow that, but it kind of gets my mind in the right place um, to get going on um, my work, which I think it works really well for me. And I know that's not for everybody. You know, some people are meticulous planners and some people are like, let's just wing it and have some fun. I kind of feel like I'm in, in between. Also, I do think it depends on the day. I think if I'm having a rough day, it's I'm going to wing it because I, <laughs> I just need to relax my brain. But this is really nice. I was also thinking as I was working through this garden, how much this garden has changed over the years and how much my family has changed because this is my COVID garden, this whole side of the garden house. I built this. I put this in during COVID. I started putting it in April and May after COVID started. And um, it was very therapeutic for me, uh, you know, because my children were suffering from not going to school. It was really hard and I couldn't see my family and my family was spread out over multiple states. And like it was, you know, it's hard. It's hard on everybody. It's hard on everybody. And, you know, my children and I stayed home and my husband is in a position where he's required. He is he's essential. So he had to be at work every day, which was scary. And while it all worked out fine for my family, at the time it was really scary. And so seeing how the garden has changed, this garden has changed dramatically <laughs> since then, and how I've changed and my children have changed, it's really kind of cool. And I think that's one of the things as like a young family that um, I work in my garden and my garden grows with, along with my family, which is, that's kind of a cool sentiment. So, all right, you all, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, one more section on the side garden and then we're shifting to the backyard and in the backyard one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go prep the heirloom chrysanthemum garden which i'm super psyched about we're going to do a whole video on heirloom chrysanthemums and why you should all have them in your gardens because they are hands down like my favorite thing right now so um so i'll be going through that with y'all and then we are going to be building a new garden in the backyard we're also going to be getting rid of a lot of the grass back there. It's going to be a lot of hard work and a lot of labor. Um, not for y'all, for me. <laughs> but it's going to be a fun process to watch. And, and I'm really looking forward to it. All right, y'all. As always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment, it grows my channel so much. Also, it just makes my day. So you all are the people I communicate with the day I, with people during the day. Um, I'm actually quite introverted. And I don't like to leave my house very often if I don't have to. And um, I pretty much, if I'm going to go out, I go out with my family or I go see like Kristen. And I have a, a group of women we call the besties. And I spend time with them. And I don't really go out to see anybody else. So y'all y'all are my friends. You're my gardening friends. <laughs> and I chat with y'all every day and I love it. And make sure you check me out on my social media outlets, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.